The markets mostly yawned last week when Fitch ratings downgraded the creditworthiness of U.S. government debt. Here's why, though, this complacency is misplaced. Hello, I'm Steve Forbes, and this is What's Ahead. We get the insights you need to better navigate these turbulent times. Fitch ratings mined a mother load of publicity when a few days ago it cut the credit rating of the U.S. government. Market reactions, however, were largely muted. After all, a typical downgrade is supposed to signal that the ability of an entity in question to service its debts has declined. But no one seriously believes that Uncle Sam would default on his bonds, the way, say, a country like Argentina routinely does. And the ability of credit raters like Fitch to gauge what is really happening with a borrower has hardly been infallible. Remember, they were giving top-notch grades to packages of subprime mortgages right up until the market blew up in 2007-2008. On the state and local government level, bond raters notoriously and mistakenly turn their noses up at growth-stimulating tax reductions. One wonders whether their analysts ever examined booming low-tax states like Florida and Texas. And some of Fitch's recent reasoning in its downgrade doesn't warrant a AAA rating. For instance, it cited the recent debt ceiling fight between the White House and Congress as evidence of Uncle Sam's deteriorating ability to service its obligations. In reality, it took a showdown like this to slow, at least a little, the ballooning borrowings of the federal government. But in a larger sense, Fitch is right that if Washington continues on its current course, it will degrade the quality of its debts. One threat is the unrelenting push by regulatory agencies to suffocate businesses with mind-numbing, growth-killing regulations. The breadth of this assault is astonishing. The 696-page rule from the Transportation Department that effectively mandates that all new cars be electric vehicles by 2032 is utterly astounding in its scope. Chutzpah, utter impossibility and destructiveness. A coming avalanche of restrictive employment laws will not only damage businesses by burdening them with higher costs, but also crush the creation of new businesses and the development of new technologies, and on and on it goes. Another threat, of course, is government spending. These growing government grabs for money mean less of the private sector investing that produces higher standards of living. Growing debt will ultimately mean, once again, massive and inflationary bond buying by the Federal Reserve. And there are real dangers from the cleanup still to come from a generation of interest rate suppressions by central banks everywhere. Uncle Sam's fiscal fecklessness will be worsened by pressure for higher taxes and destructive entitlement changes. All of this is why the 2024 elections are so crucial. There are actually exciting growth-stimulating ways to deal with these challenges. Which candidates will offer them to the voters? That remains to be seen. I'm Steve Forbes. Thanks for listening. Do send in your comments and suggestions. I look forward to being with you soon again. Oh.